Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about working with numbers in C. Now, whenever you're writing programs in C, one of the most common types of data that you're going to be dealing with are going to be numbers. So these could be things like whole numbers or decimal numbers. Basically, I'm going to give you guys a full overview of how to work with numbers. We'll talk about the basics. We'll look at how we can use different mathematical functions in order to do uh, different mathematical operations with our numbers. So this is going to be a pretty cool tutorial. Now, down here, I'm just going to talk to you guys about the basics. Um, there's really two types of numbers in C that we deal with, whole numbers and decimal numbers. And whole numbers are basically referred to as integers. And decimal numbers can be referred to as two things, either floats or doubles. And Essentially, the only thing you need to know about that as a beginner is that doubles allow you to store more specific decimal points. So with a double, you could store you know, potentially more uh, decimal points than you could in a float. Um, and there's more differences, but if you want to get more into that, you can kind of look it up. But the basics of using numbers is you just type them out. So if I wanted to, for example, um, print out the number 40, you see I have this C out here. I can just type it in and we can print it out, we can work with it. In addition to positive numbers, we could use negative numbers. If I wanted, I can make this a decimal. So really numbers are, are very simple. You just kind of type out the number. Um, but we can also do things like math. So for example, I could say like five plus seven. And in addition to printing out five and seven, this is actually gonna do this math operation. So this will actually print out the result of five plus seven. So you can see we get 12 over here. So we can use addition, we can also use subtraction. We could use division, which is going to be this forward slash, and we could use multiplication, which is going to be this asterisk. So if I was to multiply these two numbers, now you'll see over here we get 35. So those are the four basic math you know, operations. So that's going to work really well. Also, one other thing I want to show you guys, which is called the modulus operator. And the modulus operator will basically give us the remainder of dividing two numbers. So if I said like 10, and then I made this percent sign, and actually this is read 10 mod, and then I said three. So we would read this 10 mod three. What this is gonna do is it's gonna take 10, divide it by three, and then it's gonna give us the remainder. So this modulus operator will give us the remainder. So 10 divided by three is gonna be three with a remainder of one. So now we, just, we should just get one. And you can see over here, we get one. So sometimes that modulus operator can come in handy. We can also represent order of operations in C. So C is going to adhere to like the normal order of operations like P, E, D, M, S, I think it is. Um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Basically like uh, multiplication and division are gonna come before um, addition and subtraction. So if I said, for example, like four plus five times 10, this is gonna do five times 10 first. So it's gonna be 50 plus four. So we get 54. But if I wanted to do the addition first, I could just put parentheses around this. So now it's gonna do five plus four, nine times 10. So now we should get 90. And you can see we do. So if you need to separate order of operations, I mean, it's essentially just following basic math order of operations rules, um, but you could represent those like that. So in addition to doing all that stuff um, and just printing out numbers, we can store numbers inside of variables. So I can make an int, we'll just call it like wnum for whole number, and we'll just make this five. Um, I could also use like a double, and this will be like dnum for decimal number, and this would be like 5.5. Five, right? I mean, now we're storing these numbers inside of variables. And if I wanted, I could just, you know, print them out uh, naturally like we did down here. I want to show you guys one cool thing we can do though, which is incrementing a number that's stored in a variable. So I could say like wnum and I could say plus plus. And what this is going to do is it's going to add one onto wnum. So now when we print out wnum, instead of just being five, it's going to be six because we're adding one to it. So you can see we get six. And that's a shorthand that'll come in handy a lot. There's a lot of situations where you want to increment uh, a value. Um, you could also do like minus minus and that will subtract one from it. You could also do like wnum plus equals and we could say like 80. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take wnum and it's going to add 80 to it. So now we should get 85 and you see we do. Um, you can do plus equals, um, multiplication equals, minus equals. I think you can do division equals. And all of that will, it's, it's just basically shorthand, so you don't have to type out all that stuff. So now that we kind of looked at all the different operators, let's talk about how decimal numbers and integers work together. So here's a little experiment. Let's say I came down here and I added 5.5 plus 9. So I'm adding a decimal number. 
and I'm adding it to a integer number, right? So let's see what happens. Over here, you'll see that we're gonna get a decimal number back. So anytime we're doing math between a decimal number, like a double or a float, and an integer, a whole number, we're always gonna get a decimal number back. So it's always gonna give us the decimal back. Um, but it's important to note though, if I did math with two integers, so for example, let me show you guys, if I was to say like 10 divided by three, and these are both integers, keep in mind, I'm actually gonna get an integer number back. So we're gonna get like three back because that's technically the answer. But here's the thing, this isn't actually the answer. Really what it is, is it's three with a remainder of one. But because we did the math with two integers, we're going to get an integer value back. If I was to make one of these a, um, a decimal number, or even if I made both of them a decimal, a decimal number, now we're gonna get back the actual like full answer. So it's gonna be three with three repeated, just like that. So you can see if we do math between just two integers, we're always getting an integer back, even if that's not like fully the correct answer. And different circumstances, you're gonna wanna do that, and other circumstances, you're not. But just keep that in mind. So that's kind of how uh, integers and decimal numbers interact with each other. So now what I wanna do is show you guys how we can use different math operations. So it generally, just with math, there's all sorts of different, um, like I guess, uh, operations. So you could do like square root, you could take a number to a power, we could round a number. And in C, there's actually these things called functions, which can do all that stuff for us. A function is basically just a collection of code that we can call that will perform a specific task. And we're gonna talk more about functions later, but for now I'm gonna show you some basic math functions that we can use. In order to use these math functions, I actually have to do something called importing them. And essentially when we import something, we're basically going, we're telling C++ that we need to go out and grab um, code from other files. So up here you can see we're using this include statement and we're grabbing something called IO stream. I'm gonna add another line here. We're just gonna put a hashtag. We're basically just gonna copy this guy up here. I'll make an open and closed uh, greater than less than sign. And in here, I just wanna type in C math. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell our C++ program that we wanna use some math functions. That's kind of all you need to know at this point. Just know that you need to put this up here in order to follow along with what I'm gonna be doing. So down here, we can now use a bunch of different math functions, essentially just math operations. So for example, I could say like POW, and what this will do is it'll take two arguments. So in here, I could pass two numbers, like I could pass a two and I could pass a five. And what this will do is it'll take two raised to the power of five, and it's just gonna print that out. So when I run my program, you'll see we're getting 32. So 32 is two raised to the fifth power. And you can kind of do that with any number. So I could also say like three raised to the third power. So three cubed, and now we should get 27, which we do. So that POW function can be pretty useful. There's another one, uh, square root, SQRT, essentially doing the opposite. Um, so we could say like square root 36, and now this is gonna give us the square root of 36 back, which is gonna be six. So that can be pretty useful. And inside of these um, functions, we, you can put decimal numbers too. So I could put uh, both integers, like whole numbers and also decimal numbers. Um, there's another one which is called round, which is gonna round a number. So if I put like 4.3 inside of here, this will return the rounded number. So you see, we just get four and this will follow normal rounding rules. So if I change this to 4.6, now we should get five back. Uh, there's a, a couple other of these functions which will similarly like round decimal numbers. I can say CEIL. And what this will do is it'll automatically just round the number up. So even if this was like 4.1, this will round the number up to the next highest whole number. So um, you'll see here we get five. You could do the opposite, which is floor. So if I could just say floor here, if I put a 4.8 in here, Normally it's supposed to round up, but now it's gonna round down because we're using that seal or that floor function. So those can be pretty useful. And there's one more I wanna show you guys, which is called Fmax. And Fmax is gonna take two numbers. So I can pass in like a three and a 10. And this will tell me which one's bigger. So this will return back to us the bigger of the two numbers. So now when I run this program, you'll see it's giving us a 10 back because 10 was the bigger number. And a lot of circumstances um, in C, 
you're gonna have two numbers, you might not know which one is bigger, so this can be really useful to tell us. And you could also use f min, which will do the opposite. So this will tell us what the smallest number that we passed in was. And you can see we get three over here. So those are some basic math functions. There's a lot more. If you just go online and search um, C++ math functions, like you'll find a huge listing of all of them that you can use. There's things to do like uh, sine, cosine, tangent. You can do like logarithmic stuff. You can do, um, you can use like exponentials, all different stuff like that. It can be really useful, but that's kind of the basics of how you can use that. And you know, really numbers are extremely useful and that's kind of been like an, uh, a broad overview of sort of all the stuff you can do with them. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.